Let me go over the ingredient list for you real quick. This is going to be my lazy way to do a lasagna. Still have some of the flavors of a lasagna made from scratch, but I'm going to use I'm going to use the jarred sauce and the no boil noodles. We got some mild Italian ground sausage, butcher box ground beef, a pound of it, grass fed, no antibiotics ever, and no added hormones. I'm gonna do the minced garlic. You can use three, you can use three cloves of garlic if you want to mince it up yourself. Marinara, using the Nature's Promise Organic roasted garlic pasta sauce. Might only take one, but I always have another one on hand. Sometimes I get a little bit overzealous with the sauce. I'm gonna add in some fresh basil. We got some fresh basil and some fresh oregano. That's gonna give it that homemade sauce taste and texture. If you want a little bit of heat, you can add red pepper flakes. I'm not going to. For salt, I use Redmond's Real Salt, ground black pepper. I use ricotta, 15 ounce thing of ricotta, an egg, an onion, organic diced tomatoes, important, because they're in the can. This is gonna give the lasagna some more texture to give it that more of a homemade sauce feel. I forgot to tell you about the fresh parsley. I have some here in a glass, staying fresh. Our mozzarella cheese and our Parmesan cheese, block form. Gonna grate it myself. No boil, oven ready lasagna noodles. It'll save you a lot of time and frustration and they're actually pretty good. I'm gonna move on to the sides. We've got our Caesar Supreme salad kit. This is gonna save us some time. Instead of making our own garlic bread, tonight we're gonna go with some good old fashioned Texas toast. Just throw it in the oven, heat it up. We got a bottle of Malbec red wine to go with the dinner for those of us that are of age. And then for dessert, strawberry swirl cheesecake. There's the ingredient list. I will put the recipe directions and ingredient list in the description of the video for you. Okay, I got my pan out. I have some avocado oil in it, heating up to saute the onions. Got out my cutting board, I put away the perishables we don't need right now. First, I'm gonna dice up the onion. We're gonna saute it in the oil. Then we're gonna add the ground beef and the sausage, and we're gonna brown it. That's the first step. And what I like to do is just cut the ends off the onion, peel as much as I can of the bad stuff. If I can get it all off of there, great. If not, I'll put a little slice across it on both sides, and it'll help me peel the dried uh, peel off without taking too much of the onion with it. It's because I'm filming it, it's being a bear. There we go. If you ever have an onion, really strong onion that hurts your eyes, you can get uh, some water, dip your blade in it, or cut it by the sink, keep rinsing your blade off. It really does help. These aren't too strong, so I'm okay. I'll show you how I dice onions. Keep your fingers out of the way. I know I got a lot of people who are gonna say you need to fold your fingers. So I cut it down as far as I can without cutting all the way through the crosshatch pattern. Keep your fingers out of the way. That makes a good video, huh? So then flip it over and then just cut regular slices. Save your time. Set all that to the side and dice the rest of it up like you would regularly. Dice them to your preferred thickness and then slide them into the warmed oil and start sauteing them. Do that on medium temperature until they start to get translucent. Now if you want to stay busy, you can go ahead and grate your cheese, which we will do in a second. Get that ready. You can open up your meat, get that ready. I'm gonna go ahead and start grating my mozzarella. I cut it into three sections. If you need to sharpen your blade, I have a cutting board right here that has a knife sharpener in it, or you can use the bottom of a ceramic coffee mug. It'll work in a pinch, just sharpen it like you would on a stone and then clean the knife off and it'll work. I 
I'll just grate the entire chunk of mozzarella. Mozzarella. I prefer to grate my own cheese these days because you never know what you're getting in the pre-grated cheese. It's full of fillers and pulp and Lord knows what else. Finish grating the rest of your cheese. There's my shredded mozzarella. I'm gonna do the Parmesan next once I start browning this meat. Back over here, see how the onions are doing. You can heat your oven up at this time too because it's not gonna take long once you get the meat browned, unless you wanna let everything cool down. So I've already got the oven heated up. That's good, I'm gonna let these finish cooking when I put the meat in. If you were using fresh garlic cloves, you would have put it in here with the onion. I'm using minced garlic, I'm cheating, so I'm gonna put it in after the, after the meat is browned. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the meat. Let me turn this back on. We're gonna add this. This is the Italian sausage, and that is the Butcher Box grass-fed ground beef. This stuff is delicious. I'll put a link down below if you're interested in Butcher Box. I highly recommend it. And if you use my link, you'll get some money off, and I'll get a little bit of money. That's my disclosure. Um, even if you don't use my link, I still highly recommend it. It is delicious meat, and that's where I get my meat from now on. That is my commercial for Butcher Box. They're not paying me to do it. They're not a sponsor of this video. I got my salt and pepper in the fancy little dishes like they do on real cooking shows. blame it but this meat doesn't want to come out of there so two pounds of meat is quite a lot of meat for the meat sauce don't use it all i'll put it in the refrigerator we'll use it for something else later it you can have spaghetti later you know you can make some tortellini you can have throw some meatballs in it make meatball subs you know whatever i'll throw a pinch of salt and pepper in here i like the pepper salt and pepper salt and pepper it helps bring out the natural flavors so all you need is a good coarse salt and some freshly ground pepper on a decent steak to make it delicious. Where can you get that decent steak? Butcher box. So I've let this brown on the one side so that it'll be easier to break up with this fancy little tool here. A lot of times I'll just use this, but this much meat in the pan, it's working a lot better. Brown on the other side so it's got something to break it apart. I'm break as much of it apart as I can. Then I'll mix it up. Make sure I stir it so that I get it browned all the way through. You want it browned all the way through, but you know, if you don't, you're still gonna bake it in the oven, but you don't want all that grease coming out. You wanna get the grease out now so you don't have a really sloppy, greasy lasagna. This is the point. I'm gonna add a spoonful of my garlic here. Yeah, I love garlic, so a little bit of garlic juice for flavoring. Delicious. Keep that off to the side because I'm going to put a little bit into the ricotta mixture. And I'm going to add the recipe down below. It might not exactly be the way I'm doing it, but I'm gonna, I'll try to make it. Remember, it's close to exact when I write it up. Hey, we're back over here. Going to chop up my fresh spices, the parsley, and going to grate the parmesan. Anyway, I had to get a new knife because I opened up the pork package with it. Didn't want to contaminate that cheese. I'm not going to use it all, probably. Going to grate so the Parmesan. It's a hard cheese. We're going to use the smaller side of the grater. So it'll enable us to sprinkle it throughout the layers of the lasagna. Let's see how this tastes. It's softer than I'm used to. Oh, man. That is so good. That is good. What brand is that? How do you say that? Frigo? It's aged 10 months. It's delicious. Grate your own Parmesan. You don't know what you're getting in those, you know, growing up as a kid, you always had that shaker bottle of Parmesan cheese. You know, that stuff was probably good. But I don't know. They've been putting fillers and stuff in the cheese from what I hear. Now, I don't know. This is a disclaimer. I don't know for sure. That's what I hear. So, why take the chance? I mean, this might have had fillers baked into it. Well, there you go. Parmesan. Mozzarella. Gonna grab some of this parsley, chop it up. I'm gonna chop up some basil. And we're gonna chop up some of the fresh oregano. Don't need very much. 
cut all the stems off. I don't like stems in my food. Never been taught really. I just experiment with cooking. Just kind of, mom taught me a little bit and I picked stuff up along the ways. My brother, he used to want to be a chef, so learned a little bit from him. So this fresh leafy stuff, I just kind of kind of wad it together and then slowly push it in the knife blade. Make sure you keep your fingers clear before you bring that knife blade down. And you want a nice sharp knife to cut up this fresh stuff. Now, if you have some you know, spice shears, I'll put a link down below. I'm just used to using a knife, so I don't use them. You know, they're the, they're the scissors that have like three, three, four blades on them. You just put it in there and chop, 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 chop. Real easy, you're not gonna injure yourself, so that's another option for you. Tablespoon or two, just wing it. I wing it, you wing it. I don't wanna overpower it, but I also wanna be able to taste the fresh spices. I love basil. I mean, you can put the basil in the sauce hole, you know, that's what they do with homemade spaghetti sauce. You'll get a, I used to think it was gross as a kid, but you ended up getting that spoonful of the, with the whole dried basil leaf. It used to gross me out as a kid for some reason. Sometimes mom couldn't find it. She'd try to fish it out of there, but sometimes she couldn't find it. Y'all ever had that problem as a kid, eating a good homemade spaghetti sauce and you get that dried, uh, you get that big old dried basil leaf in your portion as a, as a youngin. Did it gross you out or did you just roll with it? I mean, I still ate, don't get me wrong. So same thing, this is really fresh. It's, just chop everything as fine as you can, or as fine as you want. It doesn't have to be real fine. It's just gonna add texture to our filling. But man, this basil is extremely aromatic. It smells delish. There's a couple ways we can do this now. I'm gonna make the cheese mixture. Get your spices, put your whole tub of ricotta cheese in there. Crack your egg in there. Throw your salt and pepper in there. If you want more garlic, throw a spoonful of garlic. Now, I like my cheese layers a little separate from my ricotta layer. You can, if you want, mix the mozzarella and the Parmesan in with the ricotta mixture. So you've got one layer of cheese, sauce, noodles, however you wanna do it. It's lasagna, man. You just assemble it and layer it. It's however you want to do it. So put this whole thing in there. Okay. Another spoonful of minced garlic. Told you I like garlic. I like pepper. Now this isn't like your regular table salt. That's the good salt, it's got all your minerals in it. So you wanna put an egg in here, the egg's gonna make this kind of fluffy. That didn't work. Normally you can drop an egg, that makes a difference. Well, check out my YouTube short here, where I did it. I saw it on YouTube, so I tried it and it worked. Man, that thing just exploded. Mix up this ricotta mixture. Get that egg mixed in there really good. Get all those spices in there really good. Look at that mixture. So doesn't that look good with all the stuff in it? So you can see all the grease sitting in the bottom. What I'm gonna do is spoon that out of there. Grab your jar of sauce, struggle to get it open. Pour it in there. Mix that all in really well, and then heat it up to cook all the flavors in. So I added water to the um, sauce jar to get the rest of the sauce out. So now that's a hearty meat sauce right there. We're gonna have us a hearty party with this lasagna. Let that simmer for a little while. Get your um, We'll get the lasagna pan out and we'll start the layers. 
This is how we're gonna assemble it. Got a sauce in the bottom, roundabouts, eyeball it so the noodles don't stick. Layer of noodles, layer of cheese, layer of meat sauce. Then guess what? Noodles, cheese, meat sauce. The top is gonna be a little bit of sauce, uh, shredded cheese. Then you cover it with foil and put it in the oven. Actually, I think it was a one cup, one cup of the sauce on the bottom. You just want the whole bottom covered. Prevent some stickage. A little bit of water for the noodles. Get your noodles out. You know what kind of noodles I'm talking about. I like to break these corners off because I got a rounded pan. Keep them kind of kind of uniform. Just kind of fake your noodles in there, however they'll go. Put the pieces at the end. If you want it to look pretty, don't cut that end. I like to use a rub rubber spatula for this. So I'm gonna put the mixture. Get you a nice thin layer there. Now here's where we go with the mozzarella probably should put the mozzarella back in the fridge after you shred it and make it a little bit easier because it's starting to get a little melty and sticking together a little bit of parmesan you don't need a whole lot of this save save this for the top Almost forgot, guys. Diced tomatoes. We'll do a layer of that. Just kind of spread them out so we get a little bit. Each little piece of lasagna. All right. Got plenty of straw, so just filling in some gaps that I see. Noodles, cheese, 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 tomatoes, meat sauce. You get the idea. Better than the last layer though. That's why I like the flexible rubber spatula to get everything out of there. This, this mixture right here. If you ask me, that's what makes it that and the uh, fresh, it's this mixture because of the fresh herbs and everything. And the egg, which gives a little fluff to it. And the, um, then of course the Italian sausage and the meat sauce. So again, the mozzarella. Now we don't have to be as sparse. Still want to save some for the very top, but we know now we have enough. Now this pan is deep enough. I could have used the second box and just went on with the layers, but I would have had to double up on everything. I had enough sauce, but 
This is going to be fine. This is supposed to make eight to 10 normal servings, eight to 10 ounces each. It's very filling, got a lot of cheese. I'll even put the nutritional value of what I think it is. Don't quote me. You know what I mean? So I'm not going to use all the meat sauce on this layer because I'm putting more noodles on and then meat sauce and then sprinkle cheese. Um, shredded cheese. It's another reason I don't mix all the cheese in. It's another reason I get extra noodles. I like a noodle layer on top. Noodles are cheap, inexpensive. These are less than $2 a box. And that was almost perfect and then I had to break too much. It's gonna be like the spaghetti side, I guess. All right, rest of the sauce. Might have to break into that other jar. I don't. I don't, I don't want my noodles showing. <laughs> yeah, I don't have enough cheese to cover up all the noodles, so I'm gonna have to put a little sauce on it. Not a big deal. That's why I buy two jars. I think this will make it look pretty, though. Just fills in all those gaps. Finish off the, put your mozzarella on there. Finish it off. You got more, you can add it. Sometimes I like a nice cheese, crusty layer. We're gonna cover this in foil. We're gonna bake it in foil keeps the moisture in, cooks the noodles. And then we're gonna take the foil off to let it brown some. And this is what you saved your Parmesan for. Well, this is my DIY lasagna, lasagna. Got a little pepper left. I'm gonna sprinkle it on the top. Don't tell anybody, I like pepper. Clean the top up so it doesn't get all burnt. What a nice presentation. That was a clean napkin. Boil it. That's good and tight on there. Stick it in the middle rack. Put it in the middle rack in a 375 preheated oven. We're gonna do that for 25 minutes and then we're gonna pull the foil. And now the fun part. Not so fun doing the dishes. Mm -hmm.